Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the Gold Rush tutorial. My name is Leilani, and today we're going to be talking about how to actually use Gold Rush and get this running locally. So right now, you can see that I have my React uh, app running, and I have the token balances list. I have um, token transfers. I have some pool data on Uniswap, and I have a bunch of other things that we're going to be doing today. So this is what you're going to be able to have by the end of this video, and if you want to do it yourself, just follow along. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is head to the Gold Rush Kit repo. This is public. This is where you can see all of the files and the installation instructions, and we're actually just going to be following along with this today, but you can do it on your own and just go through the README at your own time. You'll also see there's some links to pre-built templates that we have, so I'd recommend checking those out. And you can run a storybook, which is going to just allow you to browse all of the available components and see the styling and what you can do with it. So there are a couple of prerequisites I should mention. You're going to want to have NPM installed. You'll also want Git installed. And then I'm going to be using GitHub Desktop and VS Code as my editor. You can use any editor that you prefer. Also, you don't need to be an expert to do this. Gold Rush is made super easy. I'm personally not really a developer. I just do this stuff as a hobby and challenge myself. So anybody can do it. You just have to be able to copy and paste the instructions pretty much. So without further ado, let's open up our GitHub desktop and get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do in your GitHub desktop is create a new repo. That's because we're starting from scratch, so this is a whole new project. But if you already have a React app, it's super in easy to integrate Gold Rush Kit into that. You just have to wrap it around your current project. But let's create a new repo, and we'll call it Demo Video Gold Rush. Create. Then I'm going to go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio Code. Um, yes, I trust the authors. Let's make this full screen. And I'm going to open a new terminal in my VS Code. So as you can see, I'm currently in the repo that I just created. But what I actually want to do is create a new React app. So I'm going to do npx create React. Oops, there's a dash. Create React app. Uh, covalent Gold Rush Kit. I'll do actually Covalent Golders demo. Okay. This is going to take around a minute or so um, just to create a new React app, and then you'll see all of the files on your left hand side. Okay, now that we have the React app created, we're just going to change directory into the app. So I'm going to do cd gold rush. Oh my god, I already did it wrong. CD covalent gold rush demo. And there we go. Okay, I'm in the app. So let's go back to the repo and check out what the instructions are. Um, okay. So as you can see, step one in the setup is to npm install uh, Covalent Gold Rush Kit. I'm just going to copy this directly, go back to my, how do I get this to be not there? Here we go. Go back to my Gold Rush and then just do this. Okay, now let's just open up these folders so you can see what actually is in my React app. Everything that we're mostly going to be modifying today is just in this SRC folder and in the app.js file. So you can delete this whole div section because that's just a placeholder and we'll be adding our own stuff. And then we're going to proceed to uh, the following implementation steps in the README. So the first thing we're going to do is our imports. First, we want to import Gold Rush Provider, so I'm just going to copy that line, and I'm going to paste it under these other imports. I think you can delete those, but it doesn't really matter, so I'm going to keep them. And my second thing I want to import is the style sheet. Um, so I know I'm skipping this API key step, but that's because we're actually going to put that in our function, so I'm just not going to worry about it yet. Let's just get the style sheet as well, and we'll paste that right under where we just added the Gold Rush provider. Okay, so this is basically importing Gold Rush, and it's going to make sure that when we run the React app, it's going to look like I showed you at the beginning. And now let's go 
add in our API key. So I should have mentioned that in the prerequisites, but you also need an API key. Basically, Gold Rush Kit is making API calls on the back end, so you need your own key to authenticate those calls. Um, this is pretty easy as well as are the other steps. So I'm actually going to put this in the function here. And oops, I just put it in a weird place. And if you're running this locally like we are, then um, you could actually just paste your API key directly in the quotations here, but that's a little bit less secure. And if you're ever going to publish this anywhere, um, you want to hide your API key in a .env file. So that's what we're going to create now. So I'm going to change this slightly and we're going to just, oh, there already is one of those. I don't need to worry about this children thing. And because I don't want to put my API key there, I'm going to actually pull it directly from the env file. So I'm going to do curly brackets process.env.react app covalent API. Oh, I don't know why I did a return. Covalent API. Okay, it should look like that. So now we actually don't have the env file yet. We're going to create that now. We're going to go and add a folder in here, or add a file, sorry, in here, .env. And it's important that this file is not in your SRC folder. So when you close the folder, you should see it outside of that, but it is in the app. It is in Cold Valent Gold Rush Demo or whatever you called your app. So let's open that up. And what we're going to do is React App Covalent API, just like we had it in our function and then we're going to add the API key in here. I am hoping mine is edited out because I don't want you to see that so make sure you don't show your API key to anybody um, because otherwise they can make requests on your behalf and stuff like that which is not ideal. Yeah. Okay so now I've edited or so now I've added my API key in the .env file and let's go back and see where we are. So We've done the first three steps now. We've pretty much done all the imports uh, apart from the actual components themselves. So now we're moving on to adding the components that we want to render. And as you saw in the beginning, I had a couple different views there of balances and NFTs. So we're going to go ahead and add those views. I'm just following along with the ones in this example so you can do the same thing. Um, as you can see, we have a NFT wallet list, a token balances list, a transfers list, an address activity. So let's go back and I'll show you where we're going to add these. First, where it says import Gold Rush provider from Covalent Gold Rush Kit, we're going to add in the list views that we want inside these brackets. So I'm going to do comma. And when I start typing, they should automatically show up. So NFT wallet, token balances, transfers, address, activity. And I think that's it for now. And now I'm going to actually use the ready to go cold. And now I'm going to use this ready to go React component example. As you can see, we've already done these steps um, and we've added our API keys. There's just really this bottom stuff that we need to add, which sets the parameters that we're going to use for the components. So just like you have when you're making an API call, if you're using the balances API, for instance, you need to specify the wallet address that you want to look at. So I need to say whose balances I want to see, and I need to say which chains I want to see them on. Um, and it's pretty much those types of things for each, those types of parameters for each of these components. You need a wallet address. In some cases, like a token transfers view, you'll need the contract address of the token that you're interested in. So this example just has those already filled out. But feel free to play around with those and all of this stuff on your own time. So I'm going to copy um, just this part because I have everything else already apart from the mode and the color, which I'll add in manually. So copying that, going back, and in here I'm just going to copy and paste that. So now the only thing left to do is actually just inside this first bit here, I'm going to add the mode and the color. And this is going to determine whether or not I'm rendering it in dark or light mode. And it's going to show the color of the headers that I want. So as you could see at the beginning, I think I had light mode and the color was a green for the headers. Um, let's try dark mode this time just for fun. And oops, I'm not doing that yet. Oh, capitals still on. 
we'll do dark mode and we'll also do green headers. So when I start typing, it actually pops up already. You're just going to do mode equals and then in quotations, dark or light color, same, oops, I spelled it the Canadian way, color equals, um, and it pops up with like all of these different options. So I'm, I always just use Emerald. So I'm going to use Emerald. Okay. So if you go back, we have all of this now. Um, so actually the exciting part is now we just get to do NPM start first. Actually, we're going to save this because we've made some changes. So make sure you save. So all your files get updated and then we're going to just do NPM start in the terminal. And now we have our React app running locally. So that should have opened up a new window for you. I had to jump cut to this because it opened up in my second monitor. But um, as you can see, we'll make some changes to this and all of our changes will also show up live, which is super exciting. So right now, let's just go through what we're looking at in a little bit more detail. First, we have that balances component. So I can see for the wallet address I provided all of the tokens that they're holding quote rates on those tokens, the change, things like that, and their uh, total value in their wallet. Then I have all of their transfers for USDC. Um, you could change that token address to be anything. You could see their um, like DAI transfers, USDT, uh, or any random tokens that they have in their wallet. Maybe they've transferred a lot of Doge or something. You could change that. Then we have the address activity component. So for the wallet that I specified, they've been active on 13 main nets, 11 test nets, and this is when they last had activity there. This is super, super useful for the taxation use case or anything where you need to see like where your activity has been over the year. And then I have the NFT view so I can see the total value of the NFTs they're holding. Some of these, if they're kind of like not as popular, we don't have the metadata cached, but it's possible to make external requests for that metadata. But as you can see, that's the NFT view. So that's what we've got. Now let's actually exit out of this and see some other things that you can do with Gold Rush and look at some of the templates that we currently have. So in the Gold Rush Kit repo, if you go down to the template section, you'll see that we also have a portfolio and wallet UI template. So if you're actually really interested in just building a wallet or portfolio app, you could fork that directly. It just uses all of the wallet related components and it's a little bit more of a sophisticated view than what we just ran locally. Similarly, we have an NFT gallery UI, which makes use of all of our NFT endpoints. So for this, you can see all of the NFTs in the collection, and you can also see a detailed view, including their sales history, floor price, floor price, and details like that. And then what we're going to look at now is actually a template that will be coming out really soon, which is our DEX UI. So we have a series of DEX endpoints. They're called our XY equals K endpoints, which is named after the constant product AMMs. So basically any DEX like Uniswap, SushiSwap, PancakeSwap, usually there's something and then a swap. Those are the DEXs that you can see all these different um, cool info views for like you would see on Uniswap analytics. So the token pair information, pools, liquidity, things like that. This is what the template looks like right now. It's still being built, but it'll be launched really soon. So I'm just going to give you a sneak peek. Um, so I'm not changing any of this. I'll just look at Uniswap on ETH mainnet, Ethereum mainnet. Oops. So you can see there's an overview tab, a tokens tab. So like the top tokens that are on Uniswap, a pools tab which will show you all the liquidity for these different pools and how much um, people are depositing in the past 24 hours or seven days. This is all configurable. And again, this uses our X, Y equals K endpoints. So let's actually challenge ourselves and we'll add in a pool view like this into our app that's currently running locally. And I'll show you how. Okay, so right now I just have the list of the new X, Y equals K components. This will all be added to Gold Rush soon, as I mentioned. So you'll be able to play around with it but I'm just going to show you exactly how we would render something like this. So the ones that we were just looking at in the template is the X, Y equals K pool list view, which just shows you a list of all of the pools for the specified decks. And I'm going to make sure that we can add it in here so that we can view it just like we saw in the template. And that'll give you a sneak peek of how to work with the decks components. So let's go back and 
In our text editor, I'm just going to go back up here to where I first imported the components, and I'm going to do x y equals k, and it'll pop up right away. x y equals k pool list view. Now I'll just add it right at the top. That way it's super easy to see. So I'm going to add x y equals k pool list view like this, and close bracket. And actually didn't need to do that, so never mind. <laughs> Um, actually what I'm going to do is just a dash like this and then delete this component. Okay, there we go. So just like we formatted the other components, you're just going to have the x y equals k pool list view like this and then close it off. But in here we need to add our parameters. So similarly to the other um, components, we always need to specify a chain name. In this case we're going to do eth mainnet because I'm just copying exactly what we saw on that dex template. And then we need a dex name. I think it's like this. And I'm going to add Uniswap v2. Um, yeah, that's all I need to do actually. So let's just go back and switch windows to, where is it? And see if that updated. It's giving me a bunch of weird information and then it loaded. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so let's view this full screen. Okay, so as you can see right at the top of my app now, I have the pool list view that we just saw. So it's really that easy. That took me like two seconds to add that in. And now I can see all of the top pools on Uniswap and some more information on them, which is super cool. And that concludes the end of our demo video. So in this, you've learned how to install Goldrush and how to run all of the components live. You can play around with things like the modes um, and everything else on your own time. So like, for example, I could just do this right now. Let's change the mode to light and let's change the color to red and just see what happens. Why do I never remember where the window is? So as you can see, I just changed the mode to light mode and the color to red, and it's super easy, as is everything else with Gold Rush Kit. I highly encourage you to go to the repo, check it out, follow along with this video again, and change some of those parameters. Put in your own wallet address, change the mode, things like that. It's built to be really intuitive, and there's so much more that's possible with Gold Rush Kit beyond what we covered in this video, which leads me to talk about what's next. So coming soon is Gold Rush Decoder, where you can actually decode your own contract events. So for instance, um, for things that aren't built into this already, like Axie Infinity is an example, where the contract events are specific to that game. Um, and it's a little bit harder to often build applications that can show all of the actions for a really custom niche contract like that. With Decoder, you can actually decode all of those events so you could say this was like uh, I, I don't actually know the terminology, but like a breed or like a tr like a trade of an axie. Um, and you could build like a GameFi dashboard with that. Or you can find any really custom contract events that aren't often decoded, and you can do that yourself. And then you can directly add that into Gold Rush Kit, which really extends its capabilities because you can build those components yourself with your data. So stay tuned for Gold Rush Decoder. Play around with Gold Rush Kit. And don't forget that the first 100 contributors are eligible to receive our NFT drop, so check that out in our Discord. Thanks for watching. Bye.